Welcome back to our next English lesson of this week. So today we're carrying on our work around our book, The Night Gardener. In this lesson, we're going to focus on using some skills which we have practiced last week to do some powerful writing. We're going to use our skills to write a setting description about the picture in the next few slides. Okay, so what is a setting description? A setting description describes a place where a story or event happens. So think about where something is. Now we had a really good picture at the start of our book, which we're going to be looking at, which I will show you shortly. But before we do, let's have a look at an example of a setting description about a classroom. The brightly lit classroom was warm and comfortable compared to the winter weather outside. The large clock's tick could be heard with the low hum of the computer next to the teacher's desk. The atmosphere was quiet and peaceful, almost as if the room was relaxed and preparing itself for the busy day when the children arrived. Clean desks, sharpened pencils, a polished floor and the new date on the whiteboard. Everything was now ready for the first lesson of the day. The loud bell echoed and the thundering footsteps approached to transform the calm of the calm room for the next six hours. Okay, so that's an example of a setting description. Now you can see we've got lots of lovely descriptive language in here. So um, we're describing what it looks like. It's a brightly lit classroom. It's warm and comfortable, so that's how it feels. We can, we can talk about what we can hear. So we're saying it's quiet and peaceful and that you can hear the clock ticking and the computer um, humming away. Uh, you might want to list some different things that you can see. So we've got here we've got a list. Remember, if you're doing a list, you have a comma to separate each item, ending with and. Um, so there, so we, there we go. So we're talking about what we can see, what we can hear, and what it feels like, particularly. So let's have a look at ours. So for the setting of our story, um, we're looking at Grimlock Lane. So let's have a look at Grimlock Lane. So here is a picture from the beginning of the book of Grimlock Lane. Now, there's lots of little details that you might not have noticed in the first time you um, had a look at this book with us. So we've got a gentleman here walking with his hat on, a little girl here. Now, this gent here is our night gardener, but we don't know that just yet. So don't jump ahead yet. Over here, right down at the bottom, we've got William, who sat, um, as we'll see, or as you will see in the next picture, um, he sat drawing in the mud. Um, and yeah, so we've got lots of different um, different things that we can see in this picture. Now we'll look in a little bit more detail in just a second. But for now, I need you to get ready for our first task. So on a piece of paper, write down some words which you think you can use to describe the street. So make sure that you use nouns um, to describe the things that you can see. So houses, trees, and so on. Adjectives to describe those nouns. So what colours can you see? It's not a very tricky one to do that one. Um, how might you describe it? Does it all look bright and shiny? Does it look really clean? I'm not sure it does. Have a think of how you might describe it. And think about how you think people are feeling. What is everyone doing? Look at this little girl, how do you think she's feeling? How do you think this man's feeling? He's got his head down. How do you think these people are feeling during this day? What do you think the weather is like? Have a look in that picture. What's the weather like in this picture? How can you tell what the weather's like? You might want to use what you think the sky looks like, what are the people wearing? Does that tell you something about what the weather looks like? Now, you may want to use a thesaurus to find some interesting words. You might not have a thesaurus at home, but you could always use a computer or a tablet, whatever it may be, and search for some synonyms of certain words. Okay, so if you pause here, have a look at writing some different ideas down, then we'll share some together and you can add them onto your next one. <clears throat> okay, so... I've quickly had a look at this picture and written some things that I can see. So I can see trees in the background. There's a woman here who's holding a child in her arms. We've got clouds because most of the sky looks quite cloudy and a bit grey. I've got a big crack in the road down here. So that tells me that people don't really look after this place because this is a big crack in the road. No one's really taking care of it. This gent here is holding some shopping bags. And you can see that they're heavy because he's all hunched over. So he must be feeling a little bit tired and a little bit fed up because he's holding these really heavy shopping bags. Some litter on the floor down here. Um, not sure if you can tell in the other picture, but it's um, it's a metal can, uh, like a, a drinks can. I've got an untidy garden and plants. So you can see on the pavement, we've got some bits of grass and plants poking through. The gardens here are a bit overgrown. We've got a fence that's a little bit um, dishevelled and a little bit worse for wear. 
Um, so for the weather, I think it might be a little bit cold. Most people that you can see are wearing hats and quite big coats. So I think it's probably quite cold there. And again, this gent's got his hand in his pockets, which if it's chilly, he wants to try and keep himself a bit warmer. So again, we've got two different men here. Obviously, we've got the night gardener there, but I don't want to write too much about him yet because I don't know who he is at this point. I'm just thinking about where I am. So we've got the girl here. She's sat on the porch of her house. She looks a bit bored. I think she might be a bit lonely. She looks quite down, a little bit down in the dumps, a little bit fed up. Um, now, the main picture, rain colour we can see in our picture is grey. It's got bits of white and little bits of dark, almost black, but we don't have any colour. That's the main point about this bit. We don't have any colour. So we can't say that things are bright and colourful because it's just not, it doesn't reflect the picture. Then we've got our houses. We can see we've got houses going all the way down here, all the way across here. Now, if you remember when we looked at the book, this building here where, where William lives is actually an orphanage. So that means that William lives in this orphanage with lots of other children because for whatever reason, he doesn't have his parents anymore. So as well as houses, we've got the orphanage as well. So you might want to write something about that. Some words I've chosen to describe how it feels in this picture, just how these people might be feeling and how the, how the picture makes me feel. So I think it's a bit gloomy, a bit dreary, a bit dismal and dull. So all of those words are very, very similar in meaning. They all just mean a little bit, a little bit rubbish, a little bit down, a little bit cold. Okay, so you might want to pause here, add some of my ideas to your sheet of paper with your ideas on, so then you've got them for later. I'll let you have a go at doing that now. Okay, so for our writing, now we looked at a similar sheet to this last week in our lesson um, so these are some of the features that we have learned this year we have done more than this um, but these are some of the key ones which I think would lend themselves really well to what we're doing today so again prepositional phrases remember it's telling us where something is so using a preposition now I'm going to flick back to the other video where we looked at all those different prepositional words to help you front of the verbial so again it starts a sentence it tells me either when something's happening, where something's happening, or how something is happening, the manner of it. So in the morning, at school, or carefully. So I could do on Grimlock Lane, or I could do in the afternoon, or whatever really, whichever whatever you think fits with what you're writing. Make sure that they are followed by a comma. Thank you for those of you who sent me some work this week, but please remember that if you're doing a front of the verb or it's by the noun phrase, um, particularly, uh, you need to make sure you're putting your commas in there. You do for a subordinate clause as well when we get onto that, um, but only if it starts with a subordinate clause, but let's not worry about that just yet. So expanded noun phrases again. So we're going to get lots of lovely adjectives in there to describe this picture because it's quite a moody, dark picture. We want to really be expressive in how we describe the different things that are going on. So remember, two adjectives with a comma in between. Okay. Subordinate and conjunction, again, so to write a subordinate clause, we need one of these six words. Now there are other conjunctions, but these are the ones that we are looking at. So um, just focus on these ones for now. Um, so when, if, because, although, until, and since. Now make sure that whichever conjunction you use, it makes sense in your sentence. So because it was cold, he was wearing a coat would make sense. Although it was summertime, it was still cold would also make sense. So just make sure that whatever your conjunction is at the beginning, your sentence makes sense after it. It may be that you write a sentence, read it and think, oh, that doesn't quite make sense. And then have a think which other conjunction you could swap for it. So because and although are quite good um, to interchange for some of your sentences. OK, similes and metaphors. Now, we looked at these way back at the beginning of the year when we did some poem writing. So a simile. Now, this is the easiest one. Um, probably the one that I would suggest that you use in our writing. It says that something is like something else and uses the word like or as. So the boy was as tall as a giraffe. So I'm comparing someone to something else. Um, or she was so angry that she erupted like a great volcano. So you can imagine someone there, um, this girl is so cross at something that she's just started shouting or crying or whatever it might be because she's really cross. Now, metaphors are a little bit trickier. We are, again, comparing two things, but we're not saying that something's like something. We're saying that it is something else. So the moon was a white balloon in the sky. 
Not that it was like a white balloon in the sky. It actually was a white balloon. And we know it's not true, but that's why it's a metaphor. Because we're comparing it. The house is a zoo. So, again, the house isn't actually a zoo because it's just people that are living there. It might be a few pets, but it's not an actual zoo. Um, but if you think about the house is a zoo, it makes you think that the house was crazy and loud and that people are running about and doing whatever they want, really. Um, so it just makes you compare something and it gives you a bit more of an idea about um, what something else is like. Okay, so there's some things I would like you to have a go at using today. So let's have a look at some writing. So this is what I wrote about um, our picture of Grimlock Lane. So, sadly, the sun rarely shines on Grimlock Lane. Old wooden houses line the street where people gloomily walk. Since nobody talks as they pass by, the only sounds are of the cars. A girl sits on the porch and watches the dreary world, looking lonely, bored and down. On the floor, there is a crushed metal can near a crack in the road. Grey clouds, like waves, swirl across the sky. A gust of wind as cold as ice blows down the street, but nobody seems to care. Now that's my paragraph. I could have kept writing because there's lots more things in that picture that I want to write about, but for now I've just left it at that. So let's have a look. Now, this is your first job. So pause the video in a second, and I want you to have a look. Can you find uh, the expanded noun phrases? Can you find some prepositional phrases? Similes or metaphors? Might want to look for both. Uh, can you find some front adverbials? And can you find a subordinate clause? Now, there's only one in there. So have a look for those. Okay, pause the video and have a go at that. Right then, let's see if you got it right. So let's start um, with expanded noun phrases then. So the words are highlighted in red. So old wooden houses. I've got my two adjectives. I've got my comma in between my adjectives to describe my noun. Then I've got a crushed metal can. So again, crushed and metal are my adjectives and uh, my comma is in between them. Prepositional phrases. So I've got lots and lots of prepositional phrases here. So on the Rimlock Lane is where it's happening. Um, I could talk about the uh, people passing by. By would be my preposition there. It's telling me how they're moving. They're going past something. Um, on the porch is where the girl sits. Near a crack in the road. Across the sky and down the street. So lots of things that tell me where things are happening. Similes and metaphors. Now, I have just done similes in this one. As I said before, I think similes are easier. I think you'll be able to have a go at them um, a little bit better and probably make some really good similes. Metaphors can be quite tricky. So I've said that the clouds were like waves, so like waves of the ocean, effectively. Um, so you can imagine how they're moving, they're kind of swirling and moving across the sky. And again, I've said as cold as ice. Now that's a really obvious, quite a boring simile, really. Um, we use as cold as ice all the time, so you might want to think of something a little bit more um, inventive, a little bit more exciting than, than that. Front of verbials, again, I've done two, so I've done sadly, which is my front of the verbial for manner. So it tells me um, how something feels about it, how something's feeling. Um, and on the floor, so I've told you where something's happening. So on the floor is where the can is. <clears throat> okay, and finally, my subordinate clause. So I've only done one, as I said. So my conjunction is since. So since nobody talks as they pass by is my subordinate clause. So I've got my comma after it. Because the only sounds are of the cars would make sense on its own. Okay, so there we go. So that's my paragraph. Now, it's over to you. So I would like you to have a go at writing your own setting description about the picture. So there's our picture again. You might want to go back to the bigger picture on the slides so you can see all those details again. But remember, we've just done all that work where you've gathered all that vocabulary to help you to write this. So. Have a go trying to use some expanded noun phrases, some prepositional phrases, similes, particularly or metaphors, if you really want to try and push yourself, uh, French adverbials and a subordinate clause. OK, so remember, again, email us or share a picture of your work on Twitter at New It's really lovely to be able to go on Twitter and have a look and, and see what you guys have been getting up to.
if you can't really carry your own. So, oh, um, for whatever reason. So yeah, please do share it. It is it is lovely to see what you're all what you're all getting up to. Okay, thank you for joining with our English lessons this week. Don't forget, forget even. Um, there will be new English lessons on Tuesday and Thursday next week, and a reading lesson on Wednesday. We'll also be thinking about doing some spelling lessons for you. Um, but I need to speak to myself first. <laughs> uh, so I hope you're all staying safe and making good choices at home. I can't wait to see you all again. See you all later. <laughs>